for every anime juggernaut, there's an obscure title out there waiting to be discovered. So join us as we explore the best anime you've never heard of, from the tenderest school stories to the headiest heights of science fiction, giant robots, magical girls, and masterless samurai included. Once upon a time, there was an adorable little hamster named Ebichu. She was a happy little thing, delighted to don her frilly pink apron, do her master's housework, and enjoy the occasional nibble of fancy camembert cheese. But all was not well in her fairy tale, especially since it wasn't a fairy tale at all. Ebichu is a raunchy comedy starring a warm-hearted hamster, the 20-something office lady who owns her, and all the deprived, depraved, and altogether desperate people that inhabit their world. Weirdness abounds in the world of Ebichu, especially when it comes to the bedroom. Our hamster heroine might be a starry-eyed dreamer, but she's also the mysterious Ebichu man, superhero extraordinaire who comes to the aid of couples who need a boost to their love lives. There's also Makun, a soft-spoken weirdo neighbor who nurses a bizarre fetish for the hamster next door. Episodes center around topics like dirty phone calls, clandestine affairs, and some pretty grim jokes involving hamsters and blenders. Despite Ebichu's cute looks, this is definitely not Hamtaro. But therein lies the joy of the show. It's as adorable as a grade schooler's favorite cartoon and as R-rated as anything you've ever seen. Sit back, relax, and let Ebichu take you on a journey through housekeeping, deadbeat boyfriends, and all the weirdness people get up to behind closed doors. Ancient Rome, the land of poetry and politics, is a pretty juicy setting for fiction. Caesar, Corinthian columns, a deity for every conceivable situation. There's a pretty good reason that audiences love Gladiator, Rome, and even Xena, Warrior Princess. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Thermae Rome is part of this storied pantheon, although it's probably the most unusual entry in the series by far. The story stars Lucius, a befuddled Roman architect who specializes in baths, both building them and taking them. It's just that most of the story's action takes place in modern Japan, the locale to which Lucius is so often spirited, where he's dazzled by advances in plumbing, leisure, and temperature control. That's right, folks. Thermae Rome is about an ancient Roman's love of modern Japanese bathing and his subsequent attempts to bring the technical advances he experiences back home with him. How does he travel through time and space? Why is this happening to him? Does it happen to others? That's not the point. The joy of Thermae Rome lies in its naked absurdity. A dude just straight up loves baths and gets to experience two of the greatest bathing cultures in history. It's never anything but hilarious to watch Lucius lose his mind over innovations like shampoo hats, bidets, and water parks. And honestly, it's pretty heartwarming and bathwarming to see him bring the delights he glimpses back to Rome. Thermae Rome is a love letter to relaxation, togetherness, and the sheer pleasure of warm water on sore muscles. Odd subject matter for an anime, you might think, and you'd be right, but Lucius's wonder upon discovering the joy of a refreshing cold drink after a hot bath will convince you it's a worthy focus indeed. Decades in the future, a race of hostile insectoid aliens threatens the Earth. Our only defense comes in the form of fantastic fighting machines, piloted by scrappy youngsters selected for their grit, cunning, and bravery. If that sounds familiar, well, it probably should. Gunbuster isn't just a classic giant robot anime, but one of the absolute granddaddies of the genre that's influenced decades of anime since its 1988 debut. You've already enjoyed its descendants in the form of Gurren Lagann, or Darling in the Franks, and maybe even its sequel series, Die Buster. You don't need that context, though. Even a total newbie to mecha anime can enjoy Gunbuster. That's how brash, bold, and absolutely brilliant it is. Much of its success lies in the dynamic between the duo at the heart of the story. Noriko, our protagonist, is the clumsy daughter of a legendary admiral, while the glamorous Kazumi is the top mecha pilot at their academy, as admired for her skills as her beauty. Fate throws them together, creating a bond that powers the series through school hijinks, interstellar action, and an utterly iconic ending. Gunbuster is the beating heart of the mecha genre, a hot-blooded tribute to giant robots and the teens who pilot them. No wonder so many stone-cold classics trace their lineage back to its bright beginning. Nicoletta is a young woman raised by her grandparents in the wake of her parents' divorce, who moves to Rome out of a long-simmering desire for revenge. Having tracked her mother down to Cassetta dell'Orso, a restaurant just outside of the city's center, she prepares to strike, 
only to fall in love with the easy rhythms of Italian life. Casetta dell'Orso is as much a community as it is a restaurant, beloved for its delicious food as well as its patient, handsome waitstaff. As her thirst for vengeance over her childhood trauma fades, Nicoletta discovers an entirely new way of life and finds she has less and less desire to give it up. Ristorante Paradiso is a slice-of-life anime at its finest. Casaletta dell'Orso itself and its beautiful food are as much the star of the show as any of the human characters. It's the sort of place that feels imbued with love, from the wallpaper to the silverware. It's a true delight to watch characters come and go within it, revealing their wishes, regrets, hopes, and disappointments, and often finding that their time at the restaurant has changed them. This is an anime about the winding paths that human lives tend to take, despite the best laid plans and how much of a gift that can be. Nicoletta and the Casa de Lorso staff's lives might be quiet, but as Ristorante Paradiso proves, that doesn't mean they aren't enthralling down to the last delicious detail. Raka, a young girl with no memory of her past, wakes one day in a guest room she doesn't recognize. As she speaks to the people around her, she learns that she's joined the Haibane, a group of women with non-functional wings and glowing halos who live out their quiet days in the walled town of Glie. Their home and abandoned school is a placid enough place and they live a quiet, decent life, though Glie enforces some strange and mysterious rules for its seemingly angelic residents. The Haibane have no new clothing, for instance, and even more ominously, they're forbidden to approach the town wall that surrounds them. But one day, it ends. The Haibane vanish in their day of flight, gone beyond the wall that blinds them to the outside world. Well then, let me try to explain everything to you from the beginning. Is it okay if I smoke? The fans have debated the nature of Haibane Renmei and its strange story for years. This isn't the sort of anime that waits to be solved by the clue-savvy fan. Rather, it's an impressionistic meditation on the nature of goodness, community, and sin that neither seeks nor provides answers. The Haibane seem likely to be trapped in some sort of purgatory, but that doesn't really matter. It just provides the canvas for the anime's real preoccupation, examining exactly how self-actualization takes place. Raka and all the other Haibane are struggling, and they won't all learn exactly what it takes to become better, happier, or more at peace. But that's the beauty of their journey. Working towards goodness is, in its own way, a goal unto itself. In devoting itself to this moral, Haibane Renmei is an exquisite ode to the ever-changing human soul. Masanosuke is a ronin, or masterless samurai, living in Japan's Edo period. That's exactly the kind of protagonist one expects to star in an anime. Right? The art of swordsmanship is learning how to kill. That is the truth. But Masanosuke isn't some brash, sword-wheeling action hero ready to throw down at a moment's notice like his other animated samurai. He is, in fact, a timid man, to the point that he's been released from the service of his shogun. That's how he ends up as part of the Five Leaves, a gang of bandits whose leader, Yaichi, hires Masanosuke as a bodyguard. Thus begins the deliberate and interesting story of House of Five Leaves, an anime about outlaws and samurai that manages to spend a lot more time on conversation than killing. The beauty of Five Leaves is in its quiet stillness. As the story winds on and characters, settings, and relationships are explored, the anime never stumbles into dialogue, action, or drama for its own sake. Rather, it allows a deep, personal story to reveal itself slowly, line by line and frame by frame, until the viewer is utterly immersed in the story it tells. This is an anime about people on the margins, finding beauty in the decrepit and sorrow in the splendid, and taking its meditative approach to the bandits, ronin, and criminal characters that are often glamorized. It strikes an unforgettable contrast. House of Five Leaves is unlike any other samurai story you've seen, and therein lies its success. Director Masaki Yuasa has stepped into the spotlight in the years since Kaiba premiered in 2008. The decade since has seen him directing the hyper-violent, terrifying smash hit anime Devilman Crybaby, Ping Pong, and even an episode of Adventure Time. But everything that has made him the luminary he is can be seen in Kaiba, and indeed, it shines as brightly as any of his more famous work. Set in a space-faring future where the digitization of the mind means life beyond physical death, this anime follows Kaiba, a boy with a mysterious hole in his chest and somehow no memories to speak of. Lost in the swirl of a society in flux, he struggles to find purchase and, most critically of all, answers. Kaiba is a notably cute anime, its visuals reminiscent of Astro Boy, Osamu Tezuka's most kid-friendly work. 
The characters' bodies are soft and plush-looking. The edges of spaceships are all rounded off, and even the harshest environments are crowded with friendly-looking beasts and beings. But the effect of this isn't merely endearing, it's entirely disorienting. In meshing an adorable aesthetic with a story about loss and personhood, Kaiba leads the viewer into entirely unfamiliar territory, upending all easy assumptions about where the plot is going and who the characters are. In so doing, Kaiba becomes something more like a fairy tale than a sci-fi saga. Frightening, enchanting, and affecting on a primal level you won't easily forget. Red Garden lies somewhere between the sparkly meadows of magical girl anime and the bloody halls of out-and-out -out horror. Our four protagonists, Rose, Rachel, Claire, and Kate, are typical New York City teenagers until the morning they wake up with no recollection of the previous night's events. As a mysterious pair of elegantly dressed adults informs them, they're dead and have been reanimated to fight a war on behalf of a shadowy organization called Animus. By day, the girls continue to live their lives as students, daughters, and friends, but by night, they face monsters that appear to be everyday people gone suddenly, violently insane. They have a choice of sorts, beat the monsters to death or lose the reanimation they've been granted and die for real. Red Garden doesn't stop at subject matter when it comes to taking a unique approach. Early episodes feature sudden bursts of singing, musical style, and an aesthetic that looks more like Western fashion illustration than anime as fans know it. Moreover, the New York setting isn't just localization or set dressing. It's a real, researched part of these girls' lives. Red Garden isn't quite like anything else you've ever seen before, from its mashed-up genre to its western setting, yet it never overwhelms. The story at its core is always centered on its four heroines, and the surprising, stirring, and even sublime ways they survive their circumstances. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!